I got a comment from JDJJFJ asking if I could do a little more in-depth walk around on the flatbed and the construction process. So I thought I would go ahead and make a video about that. I'm going to go ahead and start at the top and work my way down, try to cover all the details of uh, the custom flatbed I did on my 03 Tundra. 2x2 two two square tubing is the bulk of the construction of this. I chose square over round simply because I like the look for a flatbed of the square tubing. It's also easier to work with flat sides than it is round sides when you're doing fab work of something that you know kind of needs to be straight lines and whatnot. If this was a structural bed, as in I built it into the frame, you know, if I was going to incorporate this headache bar as a rollover bar or whatnot, I would use round tubing. But since it's non-structural, it's just a bed, I went ahead and used the square tubing. Uh, the headache rack, I chose this height because it allows the third brake light to be seen from the rear, which is a legal issue. I also wanted the top of the bar to be lower than the roof line. So that when airflow came across, it wouldn't it wouldn't hit across that bar and make weird humming noises or or wind noises. That was a personal choice. Uh, on most flatbeds, obviously, they tend to make the bar higher so that you can put wood or whatever on top of it and it won't be sitting on the roof. I wasn't too concerned with that. I have a roof rack for putting stuff up there and for wood transportation and construction stuff like that I usually use a trailer so that was my decision in making this this flatbed was more for functionality in the off-road and daily driving world rather than the construction world although I do use this truck for work which is sometimes involves construction stuff recently I I used to have bars here that ran down and back and connected here at the rear I recently changed that design because the bars were limiting my usage of the bed from the side. I couldn't, I couldn't get items from the side onto the bed. I would have to only load it from the rear, which is somewhat defeats the purpose of a flatbed. It also limited how wide of an item I could put on here because I was limited to this edge as opposed to this outside edge or wider. So stuff like you know wide pieces of plywood or furniture, whatever I needed to move were more difficult. So I've recently modified that design and I've chopped these stringers off right here right where the toolbox ends and uh, deleted the whole entire part that went to the rear because they're just the toolbox is just floating now I went ahead and built these gussets out of some scrap metal I had uh, just to strengthen this up so that when the toolbox is fully loaded and I'm bouncing around it doesn't it doesn't bend or try to crack the welds here at this metal. This should be plenty strong for the amount of weight that I'm putting in this toolbox. I may end up changing the design again in the future. You never know. I just go with what is currently working for me. As far as these end pieces go, my long-term plan is to put a piece down that runs along the bottom of the toolbox here that I can use as a mounting surface for any type of mount that I want to put in front of the toolbox. Maybe, you know, if I want to put traction boards or a jack or you know shovel whatever I want to mount I can mount it directly to the to the metal part not to the toolbox since the toolbox is only made of aluminum you don't want to bolt to it that's my future plan for this uh, now back to the build at hand some of the details of the flatbed I made it just slightly narrower than the width of the truck thought about that a lot uh, generally again flatbeds are wider than the vehicle but that again is a flatbed that's usually built for construction purposes. This is built for more off-road and trail purposes. So I made it slightly narrower than the truck so that if I'm if I'm coming down a trail or something that's very, very tight and I just barely have clearance, it's not going to get past the body line of the truck and catch the edge of the flatbed. A uh, little detail, I have a flag mount here on the side. This is a quick release flag mount. I obviously, I'm on the East Coast now, so there's not a lot of places where you have to run a flag, but that's more for when I lived out West and when I uh, hopefully end up back out West at some point. Tie downs are just general D-ring weld on tie downs that I got from eBay. Welded those on. I only have four of them at the moment. That's all I've really found I needed 
for cargo since the flatbed is relatively short. I don't need a ton of tie downs and I'm not carrying real, real heavy loads. The gas tank took a couple iterations to get it right. I initially, this door had a, uh, had a face on it that would, it would close. This is a RV access door, just a generic RV access door I got off Amazon or eBay or one of those places. And again, this uh, gas filler neck used to be inside this with the door. What I found was that when you shorten the Toyota gas filler necks, because the neck is <clears throat> at a slight angle going down, if you get them too short and you don't have enough angle before it goes into the straight line into the tank, the gas won't flow well and it'll back up and it'll keep shutting off the flow because it can't vent fast enough. So I had to use it. I ended up using the stock length of the gas filler neck line, which involved having it stick out just slightly past the door. So I went ahead and just broke the door off this cover and used the cover just to kind of make the, a nice clean line around it. I may end up changing that in the future, but I think it looks okay for now. The aesthetic trim pieces here are again, just plate that I've bent into kind of a, a line to sort of match the truck. I mean, it's a square flatbed on a, you know, somewhat organically rounded truck, so it's not gonna look perfect. And I really didn't want it to look too roundy. I like a, more of a harder edge. But for these pieces, I just took some sheet metal, uh, cut them to size, and then I scored the line on the inside where I wanted the bend. And then I just made a metal break out of uh, I believe I just used two pieces of wood with some clamps and bent it to the angle I wanted and then welded up the seam on the inside of this to hold the position. These are not welded to the flatbed itself currently. They're mounted via these uh, bolts. These are just hex head uh, metric grade 10 bolts that I got from Ace Hardware, one of those places. The tabs that they bolt to I got off eBay, I believe. I bought like 10 of them. They're just welder tabs. I'm trying to see if I have them somewhere. Any extra ones over here I could show, but I don't know where they are at the moment. It's a bit of a mess in here right now. But anyway, these are all bolt-on, so in the future if I decide to remove them or if I want to change the design, I can pop them off and do as I please. The same with the rear section. Again, it's just a sheet metal that I put a couple different bends in. I bent it to match the, the curve of the flatbed and then bent it in slightly using the same score technique and weld on the inside. I went ahead and bolted it on. This just gives, these aren't really necessary, but they give the flatbed a better look, I think, from the outside. It just makes it look less like a utilitarian flatbed and more of kind of a custom type of deal. I don't know. That's just my personal preference. Initially, I, in, I planned on building a wheel well inside of these, making it one giant wheel well. Uh, I haven't seen a need for that currently. It's kind of easy to keep clean this way. I don't think looks wise it's going to change much. I may end up putting an actual wheel well in the future, but for now it's just sort of this facade. The rear is one section where I did not use two by two. Initially I did, but I changed the design and I used a two by four piece of square tubing for this rear area. Uh, the reason I did that is so I could fit lights on here. Uh, initially I had the lights hanging under the underneath the flatbed and I found that those were not a very good position for lights. They tend to catch on things because I was using a thin piece of metal for the hanging plate. It would catch in the wind and it would make a vibration sound and sometimes the lights would pop out. So I switched to this current setup, which are trailer lights that uh, again, I ordered off Amazon. I ordered four reds and two whites, and I just wired the reds into turn and brake and running light. Whites are wired into the reverse, and that covers all my basic needs. I've wired these into the factory pigtails so that they hook into the factory wiring. I can pull the whole thing off. If I need to replace a light, I just pop the wires out, wire, pop the new ones into the, uh, connector and lock everything down and you're good to go. The license plate is separate from the tail. I mean, I'm sorry, it's separate from the flatbed. This is mounted to my frame. I've used a motorcycle, a small motorcycle license plate light. It's an LED, a single LED. 
and that's what lights up the license plate for legality. The entire flatbed is, as you can see, the whole truck is 14 inches shorter than a stock Tundra. Um, I shortened the frame here and added this cross member after I cut it off and built the receiver hitch. It's cut off directly behind the rearmost part of the shackle hangers and that was just for departure angle primarily. And the flatbed is built to almost be the same length as the body. It just sits out just a little bit longer. The entire flatbed, I don't know the actual measurements, but it's relatively short. You just, I barely have any overhang here behind the rear tires. And that, and since, again, I chopped off a lot of the frame, I took off the spare tire. Everything sits up much, much, much higher. Uh, it's the only thing I ever hit on departure generally are the bottoms of these leaf springs. But the, even then, that's somewhat difficult to do. I'll go ahead and pull off a couple of these boards. The deck of the flatbed is just two by 10, these two by 10, no, two by 12 uh, weather treated lumber that I got from Home Depot. That makes up the bulk of it. The last one's a two by eight, I believe, just because I just, I couldn't fit a two by 12 in here properly. Um, but these are just bolted down. They're screwed directly into the frame of the flatbed via self-drilling machine screws. So it's real easy to pop these things in and out. I'm gonna go ahead and pop a couple of them out and show you the structure of the flatbed. All right, I got those out. Literally takes me 30 seconds to pull those out, which was an, one of the reasons I decided to use wood as the base of the flatbed. I initially was thinking about doing either welding in a large sheet of, uh, you know, st steel or aluminum or something, or bolt in a piece of aluminum. But I like the modularity of using wood slats because I can remove just one or two of them if I need to get to something underneath them, like if I need to access the top of the gas tank or I need to access the tops of my shocks or anything I need to get to from the top, it's easier than taking the entire bed off. And on top of that, if I, if I damage one of these um, for whatever reason, I can just replace the individual board as opposed to having to replace the entire surface. What I would like to do in the future, if I can get lucky and find an old set of bleachers that someone is getting rid of or scrapping. I found that the bleacher seats are essentially two by 10, two by 12 or two by eight pieces of aluminum. They have this generally the same shape and thickness as these, uh, as lumber does. So they're you know, about two inches thick. Um, and then whatever width the seat is, if I can set, find a set of those, what I'll do is I'll cut them to shape in the flatbed and screw those suckers in straight down onto the frame just like I have the wood and then I'll have a full aluminum bed but it'll still be modular like the lumber is eh, but I'd have to get real lucky to find a um, set of bleachers I found most people are selling them and they want thousands of dollars for them and I'm not willing to spend that just you know for aesthetics purposes as you can see here the board is just screwed directly into the structure of the flatbed uh, via those machine screws like I said um, it's real easy to get them in and out. I've screwed and unscrewed these things dozens of times and they've never had any issues of going back in place. Since they're self-tapping, they basically uh, tap their own screw holes. And when I have all the wood lined up properly, it always goes straight down back into the same exact hole. So you don't end up screwing in new ones. Uh, the, the way the flatbed attaches to the frame is very similar to the way the stock bed attaches to the frames. I just built a couple of these crossbars that were over top of where the original frame mounting points were. I have one here and then one up front. There used to be six mounting points, but because I took off 16 inches from the rear, there are now only four mounting points, and that's plenty. I ended up using a two inch body lift spacer a universal body lift spacer i believe again i think i got it off amazon or ebay or one of those places uh, and i used longer grade 10.5 fine thread bolts that match the same pattern as the stock bolts which lifted the whole bed up about two inches i ended up doing that because one i needed a little bit more tire clearance on the sides and i didn't really want to cut out this section of the bed and two i think it it the lines worked better with the cab than when I had it sitting way down real low. Overall, it just, it just kind of works better aesthetically. 
these I bolted these in years and years ago they have not come loose at all there it's this is really really solid and structural haven't had any issues with the bed staying nice and tight with this mounting technique even with just the four bolts the other spot on the bed where I did not use two by two square tubing was the connections between the front and rear structural bar I just used angle iron I found that I didn't need the weight or size of the square tubing because the basic structure of the flatbed, the outside frame, along with the, these two crossbars, which are two by two square tubing, were plenty strong, plenty strong. These are essentially just holding up the pieces of wood in the center. So these did not need to be that thick two by two tubing. Uh, the stringer pieces here at the end, because those also tie into the external structure, are two by two and then the ones from the that you can't see here but the, I have two more bars running through here that run to the front that are also two by two tubing so it makes it kind of a giant square with these in each corner which is plenty strong but also light so everything works out really really well that's essentially you know, the bulk of the flatbed you can see here how I did the wiring I, I just drilled a hole in the back of the cross tube piece in the back the wiring, the stock Toyota wiring goes into a stock plug, like I said, which hooks to these three. If I ever need to take it off, I can just, I just unscrew these. These are also attached with self-drilling metal screws. And I just pop those off, self-drilling and self-tapping, and unhook it, and I can just replace the light really easily. It's, uh, everything in this is built to be easily serviceable and replaceable. Uh, I have not been off-roading in an area with large rocks because that just really doesn't exist anywhere near where I'm living currently. So I don't know how these surface-mounted lights are going to end up working if I do end up back in a heavy rock crawling area. They may end up getting smushed and if that's the case I'll, I'll probably end up building an inset where I can put these inside this square tube and have them protected. But again, I. I replace things as I find I need to and right now those are working fine. The toolbox is just a it's a normal 69 inch toolbox that fits Tundra's stock. I got this one I traded a guy something for this I don't really remember. It's just a standard box nothing special. It sits on these rails these rails I have I have a post that I welded to the top of the rail that was just a bolt that I cut off and welded to the rail. It bolts down into that. That's how that's held in place. So you can't actually remove this toolbox from the bed without opening the top first because there's no, there's nothing to access on this side. Everything's inside the toolbox. So that's a bit of a safety measure. So I hope that answers all the questions about the flatbed. Uh, I really, I really like the utility of this flatbed I, and I, I like the look of it. I've always just liked flatbed trucks. They just kind of look like moon buggies or something. I don't know. I always like vehicles that look a little bit different than the norm. And plus I get constantly people asking me, what is this truck? What is this truck? And I kind of like that because it, does, it doesn't look like all the other grandpa first gen Tundras that you see quite often or, you know, landscaping trucks. So that's about it, and all right, thanks.